So you guys had a relationship, and so you have a fundamental fundamental understanding of the man. Um, what should people expect from, you know, what does Rick Tockett prioritize in a hockey team? Well, he, you know what? He's going to be, he's going to communicate. He, he knows how to communicate with players very well. He's going to be, he's going to be structured. Uh, they're going to end up being a, a real structured team uh, that is hard to play against. And, and, you know, and he's, you know, he's going to have a say in, in, you know, what type of players he wants to keep around and what type of players he wants to bring in. And, and I think that's important for a coach. And I think, you know, with, the, with obviously having a relationship with management before, they know Rick well. They know the type of person he is and, and the type of players he likes. And, and I think they want to build that identity as a team and, and the culture. And, and that's what uh, I think they're, the biggest thing for them is bringing Rick in for that matter. Mark, you write uh, about uh, player-coach relationship and particularly how uh, a guy like uh, Talk ha- may have to go in there and, and focus on the core players. I mean, you were one of those guys uh, as well. Um, uh, speak to that and, and maybe, you know, even in your career, uh, which head coach did you find it easiest to, to build that type of relationship with? Yeah, you know, you know, he's got to he's got to figure out who the guys are in that room that he's going to that are going to buy all in with them and, uh, you know, meet them 50 50. And, you know, it's never it's not going to be easy. it's going to take some time. Um, you know, there might be some younger guys in the waiting that, you know, need to be the guys that are going to step up. Um, obviously, you got JT Miller, you know, you got Bo Horvat, um, who are, are, you know, obviously guys who are experienced and uh, and leaders in their own right right now and and um, you know he's going to have to find out what group that core group that is for him and uh, you know I was very fortunate I had lots of good coaches um, you know that I had great relationships with and and you know communicated very well with um, you know you, I mean I had Roger Nielsen was one of the you know he was one of the better ones Bob Johnson early in my career um, God I could go down the list I had a lot of coaches so um, you know it, it's it's great to have that. You need that. And, you know, as a coach, you know, you need, you need to let the, you know, you need to find those leaders and you need, and and Nick, you know, as well, you need to let those guys lead in the dressing room and take control of the dressing room. You can't micromanage. You have to let, you know, you have to let that uh, take its part. And uh, you know, when you, when you get a strong enough room, that can happen. So what have you seen over the course of your career in the evolution of player coach relationships? You know, I, I feel like, you know, my dad played for Al Arbor and used to, you know, basically say that he didn't hear anything. You know, you played on the line you were told and you didn't ask questions and that was just the way it was. Now, you know, working a little bit with the Marley, seeing guys come into the room every day and say, well, how come I got taken off the PK? You know, like what have you seen in, in terms of how things have evolved? That's exactly, you you hit it right on the nose. When we, you know, back when, you know, we started and, you know, in the late 80s and 90s, you just, hey, you didn't have a lot of communication with, uh, you know, uh, head coaches and, and, you know, uh, assistant coaches were probably more their buffer than anything. But the head coaches, they were, they were there and they were demanding and you didn't ask questions. You just did what they asked. And and, uh, now there's, now there's a 50-50 game where you have to, you know, you have to work with each other. Like they want answers. They want, you know, they want to know why you want, you, you know, they, you want them to do this. They want to know why you want to play this system. They, they want those answers and, and, you know, you got to be ready to give them to them. And it's just a different era now. And it's a, you know, it, whether it's good or bad or, you know, whatever, I, you know, that's the way it's evolved. And, and it's, um, you know, somewhere where, you know, you, you just have some say in the room but you better buy all in if, you know, once you get to that relationship. We're talking to Mark Brecky, three-time Stanley Cup champion, uh, eighth all-time in games played, 16-29. Now for Rick Tockett, uh, you know, a lot of success in Pittsburgh behind a bench, but uh, it gets a little easier when you can look at 87 uh, leading the way in, in Sid Crosby. Right now he's got a captain in Bo Horvat. Uh, who's having a terrific year, but knows he's on a limited time here. Uh, does that make that challenge that you're talking about uh, a little harder on Rick? It, it, it does to a certain extent, yes. But, I mean, I think they're both, you know, he's going to have Bo's best interest at heart. And, uh, you know, I, Bo, I don't know Bo as a, play, as a person, but, you know, he's got to know that Rick's in his court, and he's going to know that. 
And so he's going to buy all in until, you know, that day comes, whether he gets traded or not. You know, he's going to buy all in. And, and I think Rick's going to treat him that way. Rick's going to treat him like he's part of it. And, um, you know, he's part of the, you know, the group right now and, and uh, make him feel like he's the, you know, he's the captain and, and go from there and see what happens. That's all you can do at this point for Rick. And I think he'll handle, they'll have, both handle it very well.